quick sort into two piles, but I'm not going to be able to finish this either. Uh, I, I also have a stack of books here. I need to give away one first, and this will be to the person who won it two years and ten months ago. That was Reveal from Fours. But I know he's not here today, but there's somebody here from that company who's going to take it for him. I guess that's, that's is, is this a new question or are you from Forbes? <laughs> I can't take any more. There's just too many. Is there somebody here from, from the company Forbes who knows Reveal? Yeah, so hopefully he works for the company and hopefully he knows uh, Reveal. Right? But he actually won this February of 2010. And I tried to ship it to him many times, but customs kept sending it back. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you recognize your question, and it's one of the first eight, please come on down and pick up the book, because I can't pronounce everyone's name, and some of them don't have names. But... <laughs> The first one is sort of an easy question, we'll start with that. Is it possible to receive your presentations by email or somehow? And that was uh, Daniela. So if that person's still in here, they can come get a book. The answer to that is, I'm, I can't release the 12C content, but I can release everything else. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bundle it up, I'm going to send it to Natalia, and she's going to send out an email blast to everyone who's attended with a link to be able to pick it up and get more information. Okay. So that was sort of an easy one. If that person's here, they can get it. Well, oh, and there's signatures in the book already. Now, the second question I just, I just had to do because the question's been coming at me from all directions. From this person. Okay. Uh, so there's Two questions there. The second one is, why does Oracle keep track of PIO, physical I.O. per SQL, but not redo and undo? And the only answer I have for that is, where would it end? There's so many statistics. We track a few core vital ones, but every statistic we add adds more and more and more and more work. So it would be something that via and through an enhancement request, we might be able to ask for it. I, I can totally understand why you would want this. Right? It would be useful information. Uh, it's just something we just don't happen to track. There's no technical reason for it. The other one is a much harder one. And it's about flashback query. And it says, why does flashback query use a new trial cursor for each execute? More here. And there was more there. but. Uh, I set up my own sort of example, and the example is two-part. One, the premise that flashback query uses a new trial for each execution is false. It does not. It appears to, but what's really happening is flashback query uses a new child cursor for each parse. For each parse, not for each execute. And so I'm going to show you one way to minimize the number of child cursors. And then I'm going to show you the test case that I'm going to file as a bug later on. They'll call it an enhancement request because I think they designed it to work this way. But there's no, I can't think of any technical reason why it needs to work this way. And so what I'm doing is I'm flushing my shared pool. Okay. And... I created a procedure that uses flashback query. It selects a join, it's, it's the query that I ran in my example, it joins emp with itself as of a prior point in time. And I passed this procedure in SCN. Now I used PL SQL, because in PL SQL, when you close a SQL statement, PL SQL doesn't close it, it keeps it open. So even though it looks like this stored procedure opens a query, runs the query and closes it. This stored procedure really opens the query once and then just runs it anytime you call it. 
It binds in different values and executes it. So I'm going to call this procedure quite often. So I'm calling it here, inside of a loop that goes 50 times. And I throw in some transactions in here just to make sure it's not a side effect of the fact that there was nobody else in my database doing transactions. And when I look in v$SQL, there is only one copy of that SQL statement. Okay, so it did not create 50 child cursors. However, if I use a cursor that is open and closed, so PL SQL, static SQL, PL SQL caches those cursors open. Dynamically open SQL, it can't cache that open. So here, I'm just doing the query six times, and sure enough, there are six child cursors. If I look a little bit deeper, and I look at V dollar SQL shared cursor, I can see that the reason those child cursors exist is because of the fact that they are flashback cursors. So I think they did this by design. However, if I go look at my trace file, here's my flashback query. I can see that it was parsed once and it was executed 50 times and it only missed in the library cache once during the parse, because it only parsed once. This shows that a new child cursor is not created for each execute, but rather a new child cursor, for whatever reason, is created for each parse. And further, if I go on to the uh, dynamic SQL one that I did, right here, I can see that it was parsed six times and it missed in the library cache six times. So if, if, ah, very good. So you may have one of those. So it's, I think it's an enhanced request. I'm gonna file it as a bug because I cannot, for any reason or for the life of me, figure out why they did it, but they obviously did it on purpose. Okay? So, Can you comment on using ANSI SQL as opposed to native Oracle SQL for inner joins, outer joins, left outer joins, and, and so on? If you recognize this question as being yours, feel free to come down. I've been coding SQL for 25 years. I will probably never naturally use left outer join, right outer join, inner join, natural join, that new ANSI SQL syntax, but I highly recommend it for everyone else. It makes reading the SQL statement a lot easier, especially in the future. So I get a lot of SQL sent to me. I spend a lot of time drawing on the whiteboard the tables and then connecting them like an ERD after parsing the where clause. And then you have to throw out that part of the where clause and figure out what is the predicate and what was the join conditions. But if you're using the ANSI SQL, it's really straightforward. Now, when the ANSI SQL first came out, there were some optimizer issues with regards to that. Uh, we could come up with radically different plans for an outer join using ANSI join versus the Oracle join syntax. And in many cases, the ANSI join plan was not as good as the Oracle native syntax. By 11G, that's pretty much all gone. So I can encourage you to use the ANSI join syntax especially for newly developed code, as it makes understanding the SQL easier. And there are some things you can only do with the ANSI join syntax that you can't do with the Oracle syntax, especially with regards to outer join conditions. And if you want to do a full outer join, 11G has an optimized full outer join that doesn't have to make two passes of, of both tables. It can do it in a single pass now, so it's much more efficient. So if, if that was your question, Feel free to grab a book. Can you compare container databases with transportable table spaces? And that comparison is really pretty easy. Uh, there is no comparison. You will still use transportable table spaces in a container database. A container database is just a 
consolidated database. So if you needed to transport a table space from your data warehouse to your reporting, to your, no, the other way around. I need to transport a table space from my CRM system to my data warehouse for ETL processing. I'm still going to transport the table space from my CRM instance database to my data warehouse. I'm going to detach it. I'm going to attach it to the other one. CRM is going to start writing that data file again, and my data warehouse is going to process that read-only. A pluggable database looks and feels just like a regular 11.2 database does today. Everything you need to do to an 11.2 database, you would be doing to a pluggable database. So you still need transportable table spaces and everything else. It doesn't change that. You might use it instead of transporting table spaces around from database to database. So it gives you a new opportunity. Like if you had a database where you had a table space per application, and you did that so that you could transport a table space from one database to another to move it. Like, oh, I want this to be under data guard, so I move it to a data guard database, or I want it in rack, so I move it to a rack database. Then it would be very natural to use plugged in databases for that. But in general, if you're transporting today, you will be transporting later. If you ask that question, feel free. Now, this one is uh, from uh, Pavel. I'm sorry, I'm not even going to try the last names if you don't mind. The first names is quite enough. Uh, don't worry, my, my last name, it looks really simple, right? I get called anything but kite worldwide. So, a question about data redaction. What if we have a query like select star from table where SSN equals 123-456-so on? Does data redaction protect data on that level? This is sort of the point that I was trying to make. So I'm going to walk through a different set of slides and show you an actual example of data redaction. It is not to prevent access to the information. That's VPD, that's data masking. Data redaction is about protecting the data on the screen or on a printed report. So here I have a table with a credit card number in it. Okay. I'm going to set up a redaction policy. This redaction policy is going to be on that credit card number table. I'm going to be using what's known as partial redaction, which means I want to set up an input filter. So this is a template that describes what a, social, uh, a credit card number looks like. This is my output template. And I want it to take and use an asterisk to replace characters 1 through 12. So the first 12 Vs that it sees. And my expression, my condition is 1 equals 1. I want this to happen all the time for everyone but the table owner. So I've got this policy in place. I select star from the table. I own it. I can see the information. Now, Scott logs in. Scott queries it. And this is what Scott sees. However, if you remember what I said about redaction, it happens